Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television, our community connected. Thanks for watching and thanks to our producer, Jeff Durall, who puts the program together on a weekly basis for us. We are in the uh, biology lab at uh, Fort Hayes State University in Albertson Hall with uh, Dr. Elmer Fink, who is a professor and chair of the Department of Biological Sciences at Fort Hayes State University, at least for a little while anyway, Dr. Fink. Yes, for about 60 more days, and then I will be stepping down and become a professor and working with my graduate students on projects and uh, increasing my teaching load. A little more classroom time exactly. as opposed to administrative yes, duties yes, and such. Yeah. But your successor is somebody who's well versed in biology at Fort Hayes State yes, University. Yes, uh, Dr. Greg Farley and he and I uh, have taught the same types of classes so we're going to make some switches. Uh, I'm going to be taking over behavioral ecology and uh, potentially evolution and ornithology mm -hmm. and then my regular classes which include mammalogy and wildlife management and human dimensions in wildlife. I want to talk a little bit about some of those particular areas. One of the reasons we wanted to visit with Dr. Fink is because he was awarded the Avian Conservationist of the Year Award by the Kansas Ornithological Society uh, on his work with avian studies. And if you would, Dr. Fink, talk about the Kansas Ornithological Society for a moment. Tell us what it is, known as KOS to a lot of people. Yeah, the, the KOS is an organization that is comprised of amateurs and professionals across the state of Kansas. So we have university professors, we have uh, professors from some of the uh, four-year institutions um, in the state. Uh, we have amateurs that are bird watchers. Uh, we typically meet uh, twice a year, once in the fall to have student presentations and we have an invited speaker who comes in uh, some, most of the time from the state but often uh, also from outside the state. Uh, we have a, uh, a morning session where we go bird watching um, and then we have a session in the, uh, on a Sunday uh, typically um, where we have a big uh, bird watching morning. You know, it, uh, Dr. Fink, it seems that a lot of people really are introduced to birds through feeding birds in the backyard, watching birds, just the, the kind of interaction that takes place. Yeah, and actually that's one of the, the neat things about birds is uh, they're diurnal, uh, which most of them are. There's a few that are nocturnal, which means they're active during the day and they use sight, which we do uh, frequently in our interactions and that interactions uh, with birds is, you know, really uh, conducive uh, to people's use, studying them and having them in their backyard and, and uh, going on field trips with someone who's an expert and we have the Christmas bird count which allows people to, uh, to learn birds in that way. Um, I used to teach a class, uh, an outreach class when I was at Emporia State University um, that would meet uh, four times in the spring just to go out bird watching to teach people how to bird, how to use binoculars mm -hmm. to start with and then go out and actually uh, uh, count birds and see uh, some exciting ones. I remember the first day we went out, um, I saw two species I'd never seen in Kansas before mm -hmm. and these were beginning birders and so they weren't as impressed as I was. <laughs> That's the <laughs> thing, uh, you, can, you can learn more, it's a knowledge based type thing, you can go out and enjoy just the different species that you can attract to the backyard feeders or you can go out and learn more, there are plenty of reference books, many of which were written by uh, prominent Kansas bird, mm -hmm. birders yes. and uh, uh, even some at Fort Hayes State University, uh, but really the enjoyment of birds. Um, how widespread are birds across our planet? Uh, they're essentially in every uh, conceivable habitat, uh, terrestrial habitat um, uh, on the planet. Uh, they go all the way from Antarctica to the Arctic and they're in the alpine regions, um, in the hot um, desert regions. Uh, and in the tropics and of course in the temperate zone that we are in. So We see a, a lot of species in Kansas, uh, but across the world, about how many a ballpark figure number of species uh, would you say, Dr. There's Tate? a little over 8,600 uh, mm -hmm. species that are um, extant, uh, meaning mm -hmm. living at this time. How does your work in avian conservation, uh, your uh, 
interest in that particular. How does that fit in your biology curriculum here at Fort Hayes State? Uh, well, it's a major part of both our undergraduate and our graduate program. We have an ornithology class and we have a behavioral ecology class. Um, and it, we have interactions with students that actually do uh, projects mm -hmm. uh, with birds. Uh, the graduate students do their own projects, uh, often funded by state or federal agencies um, that involve birds uh, from a variety of uh, perspectives. Much of my work has been work that's looked at management um, schemes and how that affects birds. And so uh, if someone were to burn an area, how does that affect uh, the bird diversity? If someone is using a CRP, how does that actually increase or decrease the number of species that are there and the abundance of the, of the individuals um, in the property? And this can be done not only in the undergraduate, but, but graduate level, and you find students receptive to this kind of uh, learning, Dr. Fain? Yes, actually, we provide a very great service. Uh, we have a, a very good reputation here at Fort Hayes State University relative, relative to getting our graduate students to work for state, federal agencies and NGOs, non-government organizations like Audubon or the Nature mm -hmm. Conservancy. Uh, because they do practical kinds of things mm -hmm. and they go on the field to learn uh, experiences and one of those experiences is actually working with birds. And in addition to that, of course, there is the, just the sheer enjoyment. Even if a student doesn't go yes. into a professional area, uh, they can enjoy uh, the nature around them, basically. Yes, uh, and you know, and everybody does that. I mean, uh, my wife uh, uh, feeds birds and uh, she always complains to me because we have a couple of Cooper's hawks and, and Sharpshin mm -hmm. hawks in our yard mm -hmm. um, quite frequently and I think she's got a hawk feeder and she doesn't think that's as funny as I do because <laughs> birds are birds. You know? I hadn't heard that <laughs> before but that usually is the case when you have a species or a type you're going to have a predator come in probably. Exactly, yeah so you've got a big abundance of birds in the backyard that you can attract them. Uh, Dr. Fink has conducted extensive research in ornithology and wildlife biology. Uh, behavioral ecology of bison stands out, Dr. Fink. Talk a little about that. Uh, how does that relate? Uh, well, actually, I work with both birds and mammals. And um, when I was doing my post postdoc work at um, Kansas State University, um, I was working on Kansas Prairie uh, Natural mm -hmm. Research uh, Station. and that uh, they were looking for a bison herd and a, uh, a friend of mine actually had was managing the herd out at Fort Riley and we brought uh, that herd from uh, to Kansa Prairie and uh, now there's approximately 300 um, animals that they have every year there and the first thing we wanted to know having the animals there is how they spent their time and where they actually were on the uh, preserve uh, we have some areas that were burnt annually and some that were burnt every 20 years or four years, uh, just watching to see where they would go. And so that was my uh, part of the responsibility that I had. And so I'd go out to watch a particular animal for 30 minutes. Uh, every 15 seconds I would be recording what it was doing. Mm -hmm. And then um, students you know, really signed up to do this. Um, a lot because it, bison is such a charismatic species, mm -hmm. but when you go out there, they chew, they're chewing their cud and eating mm -hmm. grass and laying down. So the excitement that we see on uh, public TV uh, often is, uh, you know, those are short spurts of mm -hmm. the fighting and, the, and that type of thing. That or the doing. large running of the herds yes. and such yeah, as that. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. occur very often. Only in the westerns, yeah. I exactly. believe, right? Exactly. And so, the students often got tired of doing that, but that's the kind of thing that I really like, mm -hmm. uh, just to watch um, what animals are doing, which is their behavior mm -hmm. in response to the environment, which mm -hmm. is ecology, and so that combines both behavior and ecology. As it relates to ecology, talk about, because it seems to occur spring and fall, particularly in Kansas, about those burns, the controlled burns that take place on prairie grasslands. Talk about the importance of yeah, that. Actually, it, it's very, very important to reset the system. Um, <clears throat> if, if without uh, uh, burning, you typically get invasion of trees, uh, which reduces the amount of grass that's available for livestock mm -hmm. production um, and also uh, decreases the grassland. Mm -hmm. um, you know, parts of the state uh, are more prone to that. The eastern part of the state having a 
a closer proximity to the eastern deciduous forest, has uh, more uh, trees than we do out in the west, and also has more precipitation, which is actually a factor in that. Mm -hmm. And so the spring burns um, and fall burns, actually uh, there's more people starting to do fall burns, but most of it is done in the spring, um, enhances cattle production as well as enhances the grassland. It replaces what used to be a natural occurrence on the prairie, didn't yes. it, Dr. Payne? Yes, yeah, we, we think the, uh, some <coughs> documented evidence suggests that uh, most, most spots in the Great Plains probably burnt every four to seven years. Dr. Fink's hosted multiple state and regional ornithological society meetings. Professionals and students exchange and present ideas. Graduated in 1972 with an associate degree in math from the College of Lake County in Grays Lake, Illinois, before earning his bachelor's in fish and wildlife management from the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, North Dakota. As he mentioned, uh, he had a focus on behavioral ecology from Kansas State University. Dissertation, Male Behavior, Territorial Quality, and Female Choice in the DACA cell. And uh, how did you transition from math to biology? Uh, actually, my uh, advisor at the community college told me to take math until I couldn't stand it. And so that's <laughs> what I did. Um, and I took, took through second semester of differential equations and then um, switched over to what I was going to do originally was to switch over to psychology, mm -hmm. uh, wanting to work with mentally retarded children. And I, I really didn't have the patience for that. Mm -hmm. And that's where I, I started thinking about doing animal behavior because he said, well, you can study the behavior of animals. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't realize that as an mm -hmm. incoming freshman um, to college. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I took off and started going into biology and, and doing behavioral analysis. And behavioral analysis of animals can tell us a lot about environment, can't it? Yes, it can. Because in fact, mm -hmm. they are responding to their environment, mm -hmm. uh, whether it, it has to do with temperature, humidity, uh, in their environment actually includes other animals, uh, mm -hmm. you know, their own species where they might be competing against individuals or predation that might occur. Mm -hmm. um, and, and those kinds of things are all part of the environment and animals act differentially depending on uh, the nuances of all, of all of those kinds of things. Finally, Dr. Fink, would you tell us why we need to be concerned about conservation in general and ecology because that's a central theme of most biological studies. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, as the planet um, has become populated more and more with people, uh, we have fragmented the, the ecosystems, um, which has caused uh, uh, some species to decline rapidly. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's imperative to, for us to actually uh, conserve species for a number of reasons. I mean, some of those are reasons that really support humans uh, engineers, for example, uh, you know, using Velcro, uh, looked at a plant uh, mm -hmm. to develop uh, how Velcro works and, and other types of things. Uh, so we can learn from nature, uh, we can learn from what they're doing, uh, we can see many of the behavioral kinds of things that humans do in animal systems uh, all over uh, the world. And those things help us understand then um, the place that we actually have as humans and the place that the animals we're actually studying have in that system. Congratulations again right. on your award, Dr. Fink. Thank you very much. Winner of the Aviation Conservationist of the Year Award from the Kansas Ornithological Society, and for a little while anyway, the Chairman of the Biological Sciences Department at Fort Hayes State University, Dr. Elmer Fink. Our guest on Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching.